Throughout the 80s and 90s, Microposa's Sid Meier rose to become one of the most prominent game developers, producing such hits as Silent Service, Pirates, Railroad Tycoon, and Civilization. However, there is one title that most people forgot, and that's Covert Action. And if you stick around, I'll tell you all about it. Before we get started, I just wanted to let everyone know that the full gameplay video for Covert Action is available on Yarg Side 2, so you can check that out at your leisure. Well, let's open up the Yarg file for this game and see what we got. In Covert Action, you play Max Remington, a CIA agent whose job is to track down and stop enemy terrorist plots. The game itself has a pretty steep learning curve, with lots of keyboard commands you got to figure out. During gameplay, lots of information will be thrown at the player pretty quickly, so it's best to have something like a notepad to write down some of this stuff. Well, let's get started. First picking some options to start the game with. And then we roll through the little intro screen with its catchy music. Blah, blah, blah. Covert action. Yeah. Alright, let's get started by creating a new character. I need a good name to use. Something, uh, yeah, something like that. And this is basically the difficulty level uh, going from local disturbance to global crisis. With local disturbance being the easiest, let's go there. Then we can select the things we're good at. The you know, Basically, you want combat, crypto, and electronics. I wouldn't even waste time improving your driving skill. You won't be using it, trust me. The CIA chief is the guy that gives you your missions at the start of each covert action scenario, I guess. Uh, basically, all these crimes are occurring in real time. And what happens at the beginning of the game is he'll give you several clues that kind of indicate where, you know, who's involved and, you know, where they're located. Uh, as you'll see, it's just kind of things like locations of buildings and you know as you follow up on these clues they all kind of point to a a, a specific person that's uh, involved with the crime somehow so you follow up with these clues and uh, try to find out as much information about the suspects as possible and make your arrests and you're done after the cia chief gives you a handful of clues you're then sent to visit your Research assistant, who, as you'll see, is uh, a graphic that I use elsewhere in these reviews. It's the open filing cabinet girl that I use. Uh, but basically, the research assistant will tell you where to go and who you should check out for more information. So once you're done with her, uh, there's other things you can do in the CIA headquarters, which we'll get to later. Gameplay in Covert Action is comprised of four main mini-games. Combat, which is basically going inside a building and shooting things and collecting information actively. Driving, which I'll get into that a bit later. Cryptography, that lets you decode messages the enemy is sending to each other. And electronics, that's all that is is wiretapping that lets you hear their phone calls. There is a fifth minigame that isn't really discussed in the manual or on the back of the box, and that's a file clerk. Basically, you'll be doing a lot of searching around in databases and things and your own files and stuff. It's almost like work. It's kind of a pain to keep track of all this stuff. That's why I said earlier you should have a notepad with you when you play this game, because the amount of data you get is just kind of ugh. at any rate let's have a look at each of these mini games individually one of the sub games that are in covert action is a sort of driving game 
basically you use this whenever you want to like tail an enemy agent that you spot coming out of a building or something. Honestly, I've played this game a lot. <laughs> In the last 20 some years, I, I found almost no use for this. It's probably one of the worst driving sims I've seen on any sort. It's, it's, it just doesn't work like a real driving game would. I, I just kind of ignore it. But it's there if you want to play around with it. One of the best mini games in covert action is the phone tapping. That's uh, basically you're just trying to stop the flow of electricity to the telephones in order to get information, but without setting off any of the alarm bells. Uh, at lower levels, it's really easy. Um, once you get up into the higher levels, you start getting like rev things that reverse the uh, the flow of electricity and things, and it take it. You have to think about your moves uh, on this board much, uh, much harder. <laughs> but uh, yeah, at the early levels, it's a it's a it's a breeze to go through the, the phone tapping part, and it lets you collect information with very little uh, risk to yourself and using very little in-game time to do it. The cryptography game in Covert Actions, another fun mini game. Uh, basically, when you're in the course of doing your investigations in enemy buildings or whatnot, you will run into these coded messages from one terrorist agent to another. Uh, basically, they're using a, a simple <clears throat> letter substitution cipher, which I'm sure that no intelligence agency or terrorist agency in the universe uses because any you know, eight-year-old can crack this, but, you know, it's, it's, it does give it a certain flavor to the game that you've got to figure this little coded bit out, and it's, it's something to do. After a little while, you'll be able to select all the letters that uh, are in the message just by, you know, seeing what words they spell out, and then you'll get to decode the message. One of the main activities you'll find yourself doing in covert action is breaking into buildings. Usually this is to gain information or arrest a, a terrorism suspect. Before you break into the building, you'll be given a screen where you can select the equipment you'll use for that particular break-in job. Once inside the building, you got to remember what it is you came in the building for. If it was to collect information, start photographing filing cabinets. If you're in there to capture an enemy terrorist, track him down, make sure you have all the information you need for the arrest, and beat feet out of there. Uh, I mean, you can screw around in these things. You have grenades and such. You can set up booby traps and get into gr grenade fights with uh, uh, you know the enemy terrorist uh, uh, soldiers that are guarding the building, but it just seems kind of pointless. Uh, it's not really a it's not really a tactical game. It's like you just want to get in, get the information, get out. I don't. That's why usually when I play this, I don't mess around with with the grenades or with the the Uzis or anything. I just I just want to get in there, you know, and do whatever needs to be done in that building and get out. Basically, all four mini games lead to this, which is the core of covert action, which is trying to figure out who did what and how to arrest them or whatever. So all the information you collect in the world is put into these files. You have a file for clues, a file for uh, suspects, a file for inside information. This is usually information you find in a safe somewhere in one of the bad guy's headquarters. And basically you need to look here every time you want to see okay what do i need to do next what do I, you know who do i need to go after where do i got to go it's all going to be here you just kind of got to sift through all this stuff while it's great that all this information is being collected uh, the only problem is you're not able to view it once you break into a building or something so you have to look up that information beforehand and then break into the building to do whatever it is you're in there for as I mentioned before, a covert action scenario plays out in real time. So in order to track these people down, they're always in different cities all over the globe. So you have to travel via airplane, which eats up a bunch of time. 
It kind of does make me feel like I'm playing one of those old Carmen San Diego games. It's like, where do you want to go? Huh, okay. Once the terrorist plot has run its course, you'll be shown this little crime chronology movie. This will tell you basically what all the different enemy agents were doing and what you were doing during the course of the, the plot. Uh, at the end, you'll be given an efficiency rating to let you know how well you did. After finishing Covert Action, Sid Meier was dissatisfied with the final product. He believed that the separate elements of the game, however good they were, they detracted from the overall gameplay. So as a result, he developed what he called the Covert Action Rule, which basically states, it's better to have one good game than two great games. While I can definitely see where he's coming from, I don't necessarily agree with his assessment on how good or bad Covert Action was. I thought it was a great game. In fact, I'm going to give it an A- score overall. Hey everybody, thanks for watching my video. If there's a specific game you'd like me to review, drop me a note in the comment box below. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. If you want to see more of my stuff, why not subscribe? Also, if you really want to, you can support me on Patreon. Thanks for watching.